So can an AI take over an organization? Mm -hmm. Yes. It can, it can actually just slightly sway leaders who are currently running organizations. It sway leaders that are currently running organizations. It can create companies. I think we really are at a turning point in technological history. It's likely that in the near term, every human enterprise that trades in on intelligence, art, medicine, science, just office work, will either be integrated with AI or be massively incentivized to be completely transformed by it. Now you may have heard of ChatGPT. It's a popular online chatbot which is powered by artificial intelligence. We will not be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. In a few hundred years' time, there won't be any people. It'll all be digital intelligences. That's possible. We just don't know. It just happened so suddenly, you know? Not many ordinary people could have predicted the advancement of technology in our current day and age. What started as a simple way to keep us all linked together has become a necessity of sorts in modern life, and as time progresses, the more we abandon the traditional simple ways of the old says the one posting a video to YouTube. Blame an anime currently airing that made me think about this topic more, but we'll need to wait on that one. For now, let's talk about an anime that embraces more traditional values. An anime that teaches the beauty and the fun of doing it yourself. Well, that's fitting. So, Do It Yourself, known by its abbreviation, DIY. Shut Up Johnny is an original anime about a hobby that involves building slash repairing stuff on your own, rather than getting someone else to do it. It's actually been a fairly popular hobby for a while now, but has recently entered an acceleration in popularity due to the biggest reason why a niche hobby would gain attention. The Internet. Don't we anime fans know all about that? So it's evident that at some point, an anime would come out about this. And in the fall season of 2022, one finally came out. A slice of life about a DIY club that needs members or it'll be forced to disband. While this is a very common premise for a slice of life meant to teach viewers about a specific hobby, DIY sticks out due to its wide variety of entertaining characters with infectious personalities and interactions, its unique but straightforward animation and art done by Pine Jam, and its messaging that building something from scratch can be really fun. It's not the most unique thing out there, but it's worth a watch if you like the genre. It's a very relaxing, cute, and easy to watch show. But let's delve a little deeper into the story and what exactly makes this show so good to me. DIY tells the tale between two childhood friends, set in a world after another technology boom where high schools began incorporating this new tech into their curriculums. One of these friends, named Poen, is a tech-savvy and highly intelligent young girl who wishes to go to one of these high-tech high schools to help further technology to eventually make life so convenient for humans that working would be unnecessary. And the other one is Yua, who's a ditz who ended up going to a more traditional high school than her friend because she failed the entrance exam. This causes a bit of a rift in their friendship as Perrin begins to distance herself from her because she was looking forward to going to high school with her childhood friend. On the way to school, Yua bumps into the DIY club president Wei, who learns that her club needs five official members to be officially recognized as a club. If she can't get them by the end of the year, she'll have to take down the club. That's pretty much the story. The West is just girls building shit. With the main goal for Yua to eventually rebuild the bench she and Purin use to bond together, in hopes that it will fix their relationship. Like I said before, it's not exactly new for the genre, but with a show like this, being new isn't necessarily important. What is important is how it handles the topic it's trying to sell. And as someone who doesn't know a whole lot about DIY, or building in general, I say it handles it pretty well. It goes into great detail about the process of constructing various different things, from more woodshop oriented items to gem like jewelry to at the end an entire treehouse. This was obviously made by people who really care for DIY considering just how much detail it goes into the process of making all this stuff. And it's also pretty neat that DIY is so varied that different aspects of it appeal to the girls differently depending on their personality. 
Jobco specializes on the more analytical side. Takumin focuses on beauty. And she is more focused on woodshop. DIY also seems to be a very creator-influenced hobby, as in what's best to do in certain situations seems to be dependent on what you personally like to do with the materials that you have. So if you are somewhat knowledgeable about DIY, you may not agree with every little method this series teaches. But it does show someone like me what DIY is all about, and just how fun it can be to create something on your own with friends. There's a clear message in this show to me that I think is very relevant right now, and this goes far deeper than just DIY specifically. It may be easier and more convenient to ask a computer to do everything for you, but taking the time and building something with your own hands can be a much more fulfilling process. DIY goes through every step of the process in pretty big detail for a variety of different builds. And yeah, it looks pretty hard, but it can also be a bonding experience, and seeing what was once a mess of blocks and nails turn into something completed is a feeling that's incomparable. And this is something that the story doesn't hammer home telling you, but rather visually showing you. Every time the girls complete a build, big or small, they have these jubilated looks on their faces. While I can't relate to this with DIY directly, I can compare it to something I do know which is doing this. Every little element used in these videos is just one block to the building, slowly being crafted together by me. If I was telling an AI or even someone else besides me to do all this, I wouldn't feel the same jubilation when it's completed. That's what makes this message so universal to me. The true fun in DIY is the process of seeing an idea you and or your friends came up with and seeing that idea form in front of you. It's a passionate message that anyone who's ever taken the time to make something from scratch can understand. It's not something unlike what a show like Izokin does just with a different hobby. It takes you along for the wide, and by the end, you're left just as happy for the characters to finally be finished as they are, because you saw the steps it took to get there. Not to mention, there's also this heartwarming feeling of watching friends do what they love doing. To put it simply, DIY is a lovely story, one that's easy to watch and enjoy with messaging I feel is important in our world that's slowly becoming more convenient than ever. It embraces the hard work because because the feeling when it's done is so gratifying. And the bonds you make along the way stick because the memories of building with someone never disappear. Since the characters aren't exactly the most death heavy out there, I'm going to spend less time on some of these characters than I usually do. Some will be longer than others though. A pretty common message in shows like these is that a common interest can help develop a friendship that otherwise wouldn't have existed. And DIY is no different. But this message is amplified in DIY as not only are the characters different in terms of personality and belief system towards DIY, but at times characters come from completely different cultures. It's such a diverse group of characters in terms of personality, class, look, etc, which not only hammers home the message that these characters would have never met if it wasn't for DIY, but also makes every character stand out in their own way, making every character lovable. Some of them, such as Jobco and Perrin, share similarities with each other that make them bond even more, but are still completely different in terms of presentation. We'll get into more of that later. While every character is fun, by far the most fun in my eyes is our main protagonist, Yua. I've always had a soft spot for ditzy girls, and her clumsiness and natural airheadedness is so hilarious to watch. It's also inherently funny to see someone so clumsy try and do workshop of all things. Yet despite her airbrain personality, she is actually pretty smart and she knows that she's not as helpful as the other girls, making her believe that she's useless. This sudden awareness coming from a girl who you're meant to believe is pretty carefree was interesting interesting, something you usually wouldn't see from this type of character. She might be silly, but her awareness of her friendship with Perrin drifting apart and her status in the club shows that she's far from stupid. It doesn't go a super dark place with it or anything, but it's something I found intriguing. She really wants to do DIY, especially since she did it as a kid but wasn't allowed to because of her clumsiness. So seeing her finally get accepted into doing something she's seemingly been wanting to do for a while is really sweet. Really, Yua is just so incredibly silly that it's impossible not to love her. Her very imaginative mind, her funny way of speaking, and even her enjoyment of the pun involving her name, Yua Seofu, do it yourself. Get it? Cause 
Because if you say yourself in like a Japanese accent, it kind of sounds like you are selfu, which is her name. So it kind of sounds like do it you are selfu. Kind of sounds racist when I do it. That it does. Look all this, it's all it's so goofy. Plus her art is actually pretty good and the resolution involving her character that she's around because of her creativity was really sweet. Common thing you're going to notice with these characters is a lot of their developments are surprisingly visual. Their emotions on their face tell a lot of their stories. I bring it up here because Perrin is the prime example of that. Being the tech horny girl she is, Perrin considers DIY to be old news in the age of tech. But it's pretty clear that deep down she has a hidden love for it considering it was a big reason she and Yua became friends in the first place. That's the problem with Perrin, she just can't be honest with her feelings and despite clearly wanting to be a part of the DIY group, she plays this act of pretending like she's above it. To put it simply, she's a <coughs> Thanks, Najika. While towards the end of the season, her jealousy is pretty clear, it was shown visually from essentially the very beginning. She gets very pouty when Yua is hanging out with other people, or when Yua is talking about her experience at her new school. Despite being at a higher status than Yua, it's clear that she's not as happy as her. I feel it's because she's alone. It hammers Yua's home feeling more comforting and lively, while Poen is mostly alone, really only talking to this weird jellyfish robot maid thing she has. Poen only focused on her studies and was almost wasting away when deep down she wanted to have fun too. She wanted to rekindle her friendship, which is why when that facade finally drops, she's the happiest out of everyone. Even when Jobco comes along, Poen seems considerably more happy because it's just someone to bond with. When they're moving all of Jobco's stuff in, Poen is pretty engaged in what she's doing, and she's doing it all with a pretty bright smile on her face. Something that we never saw before at that point. It's also shown just how much Poen cares for Yua. Whenever she falls and Poen is around to know it, she's usually the one who's the most worried for her. Stuff like that happens all the time. She's also the only one who knows what Yua is thinking. So despite their friendship drifting off and Poen not being able to keep it real, they still care for each other a lot. And seeing these two come back together again is incredibly heartwarming. Poen also has the best chemistry with each of the characters. Her protective nature over Yua, her bonding with Jobco over Tech, and just her overall bright and positive attitude when she drops her at is a huge plus for the series. She's a character who might turn some people away at the beginning, but just give her time. She's one of the sweetest characters out of the group once you see the real her. Probably my favorite character in this show is Jobco, who's a technological genius who transferred from America to Japan temporarily. As you'd expect from an English-speaking native, you got a lot of... Shut up! Leave me alone! Good job. This is perfect! Moments? I'd be lying if I said that wasn't partially the reason she's my favorite character. However, I do find her fascinating since her intellect makes you forget that she's also a 12 year old and has the emotions of a 12 year old. At the end of the day, she's a kid in a world she's not used to with no family or friends. She also struggles with honesty. She always says she hates DIY, but the memories with her mom are her happiest. Even though it is because that was the time she felt most like in a family, the fact DIY is involved in that at all indicates she has fonder feelings for it than she lets on. Since we're on the topic of her past actually, you could point to the reason for her cockiness at the start, like when she says she built a phone, comes from her wanting to be complimented again just like her mom used to. Remember, she's a kid, so it's not out the realm of possibility. She is kind of similar to Perrin in a way, which is why their dynamic when Jobko ends up living with her is funny to me. It's two tsundereis trying to un-tsundere each other while still being tsundereis themselves. She leaves a big impact on the show, so when she leaves, there's a notable hole, but she leaves behind some fantastic moments that showcase that even with all the money and tech she had, she was the happiest bonding with others, which I think is nice. Once again, a similar message to Perrin's. Speaking of foreign exchange students, Jobco is not the only one. 
It's where we get two of these, especially one from Southeast Asia. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Like Jobko, she was also born witch, but she never liked the formalities and etiquette of being a witch daughter. Instead, she wants to be playful. Hell, we can assume at least part of the reason she's so playful now is because she probably wasn't allowed to be a normal kid in her own home. And it seems like the only place that allowed her to play was at the teacher's house. Whereas Jobko's issue came from the tragedy involving her mom, she was born in a system that never fit her. She never belonged in this type of environment. It's just not who she is. The DIY club gave her friends something to do, but most importantly, a place she can actually be herself in. A place that accepts her. It's a sweet little character arc, and her energy somehow stands out in this cast of wild personalities. Takumin is another character whose arc is a little more visual. It shows her struggling with fitting in throughout her school days, leading to her being nervous and anxious around others. So meeting someone more carefree in Yua did a lot for her, since Yua being around her seems to have opened Takumin up a lot. She's not too important of a character, but her hardworking attitude mixed in with her socially anxious past was pretty sweet to learn about. She mostly plays the role of the straight woman, a very normal character in this cast full of different personalities. And then finally, Finally, there's Wei. Being the club leader and all, Wei has the most experience in DIY. The most notable thing about her character plays into misunderstandings. Something which seems to happen all the time in high school is considering just how often I talk about false rumors being spread about someone without ever meeting the actual person. These rumors made her seem like some kind of a mean girl, when in reality she's actually pretty nice and feminine, despite her love for DIY. It seems she just likes doing things herself, hence why she also takes on baking, a similar process to DIY if you think about the ingredients as blocks. Sadly, she's not as good as that, but hey, you gotta start somewhere. There are also moments when she acts very happy, like when talking about her interests, or less confident when she has to be more sappy. Really, Wei is just a normal girl, which considering her reputation as some kind of an aggressive person, is very adorable. She also seems to really enjoy her war as the club leader. It seems like she's really happy to finally share her love for DIY with other people. I actually found this cast to be surprisingly memorable. Each one has at least one notable trait to them, and each develops due to their friends in the DIY club as a whole. Some of these were pretty visually told, allowing viewers to infer their stories. I also like how it was paced. Poen's development takes most of the show, and it smartly progressed as each event breaks the character more and more. She even stops getting mad at the Poen nickname after a while, and later on embraces it. We never learned why Jobko left for Japan, and the cause of her loneliness until the very end. Yet it was subtly hinted at us for the entire show. For a simple cute girl anime, these characters all have very solid writing to them, making you care for each more as the show progresses so that when one inevitably does leave, that hole in the show is felt. I also noticed that despite their differences, they can relate to each other in some ways. For example, Takumin can relate to Jobko's loneliness. Poen and Jobko are very similar just as characters. She and Jobko are both foreign students trying to find a sense of belonging. There's probably more in there somewhere, but I found it interesting how such contrasting characters can still find traits to relate to each other with. Overall, it's a fun cast, fitting for this type of show. Another element that's going to surprise you about this show are the visuals. It's kind of tough to put my finger on what makes these visuals so pleasing to look at. It's a simple style, but it perfectly reflects the mood and vibe the series gives off. Capped off with backgrounds that almost look like paintings. It's a design that makes the series stick out, only really augmented by their dedication to more minor details. Yua's bandages, for example, fit her clumsy self, but it also makes her memorable by default from an art standpoint. I really liked it when the series occasionally added more or less band-aids depending on how often she was hurting herself. Changing designs like that so consistently can be a bit of a taxing process, but I'm glad the animators decided to go the extra length with it. 
it's such a fun way to visually tell a story with that character. Of course, the details in every DIY project they make are also expertly crafted. It's a show that really nails in the details, even down to the faces at times. Really brilliant work there. That's part of the reason why the visual storytelling works so well. However, that does not mean they won't show off a little hero there. There's some very smooth moving shots that add some visual excitement to what is a pretty simple anime. There's some fluid character movement as well. The cutaway gags are also pretty stylistically artistic. They're all so wild and kid-like, which just perfectly fits Yua's imaginative mind. All these shots are so well implemented that it doesn't feel jarring, and actually helps these scenes stick out due to just how well they are. Usually these cute girl anime are lacking visually, but you can't say that for DIY. It's all simple, but not in a way that comes off as lazy. Far from that. It's a very creative adaptation that's easy to watch but also memorable from a visual standpoint. Same thing with the music in all honesty. A lot of the background tracks sound so bubbly, happy, and relaxing. Just some soothing tracks. Probably the most notable piece of music here would be the opening. An opening that's so colorful and happy that it makes me smile every time. Also, during these dancing sequences, Perrin looks the most excited out of everybody. Almost like a taste of her positive character towards the end of the show. Overall, it's just a fun OP. It was always great to watch it whenever it came on. On the complete opposite of the spectrum though, the ending is very relaxing, featuring some pretty nicely drawn pictures of the animals. The details here are good, and it's sung by Pern and Yua's VAs, which is just a really cute way to wrap up the series. The two friends together for the last time, unless a sequel comes out. That's a whole other discussion though. Speaking of VAs, let's talk about those two again, shall we? Yuwa's played by Konomi Inagaki, a newbie when she did DIY, but since then she has had her prints on a lot of the seasonal anime released in the past year. She's also younger than me, so that's nice. I always love to see young people succeed, and her voice is actually fitting for Yuwa. I feel like part of the reason I loved her character was because of her performance, beautifully showcasing Yuwa's goofy little quips in every episode. Especially her giddiness over that do-it-yourself pun. She sounds like a kid, and it's absolutely adorable. <laughs> <laughs> On to her friend, Poen, done by Kana Ichinose, who's more of a vet, voicing similar type characters like Ichigo and Maki. She's a fitting VA to play a tsundere slowly opening up since she has experience as both a tsundere and a normal dere dere, both sides of Poen. Another super entertaining performance. Again, her slowly opening up is very cute. Entertaining performances, you say? Yeah, we can't go much longer without talking about Jobco, performed by Nichiki Omori. It was pretty obvious she wasn't a native speaker, which just kinda makes Jobco funnier. But what really impressed me about this performance was Nichiki's previous jobs. I shouldn't be surprised at how versatile voice actors' range can be anymore, but it will always impress me how this... Good morning. Can also be voiced by this. Kudoways were not what I was expecting when I looked up Jobco Seiyu. <laughs> what can I say? The thing with this cast is, outside of Yua, they're all very experienced. I mean, Ayane Sakura, Wei's VA, is one of the most well-known in the industry, whose voice is pretty much everywhere you look. I will say, she's VA, Kawan Takahashi, is relatively newer, mostly known for her performance as Kobani, which again, seiyus can be very versatile, but even she is a couple years in herself at this point. All of these performances just gave this series a new life. <laughs> DIY is a fun series. Not anything too out of the ordinary, but it does have some smaller elements that make it stick out compared to other cute girl slice of lives. It's a show I wanted to review last year when it first came out, but I ended up not getting around to it. 
I was pleasantly surprised at just how appealing this show is visually. The characters are all built pretty well, and their chemistry is unmatched, which is the most important element of a slice of life anime. And while the story isn't unique, the messaging is very fitting for the time we're currently in, and can be pretty sweet. It's one of the better slice of life anime that was released in the past year to me. This has been Kika Ai, and as my boys in Latvia say it, Audio view. I definitely fucked that up. <laughs>